unlike many RPGs, where the hero lives in the world for years before discovering their true calling, Fallout 3 starts off with your character being born. But what if the lone wanderer's mother didn't die from childbirth, but as a result of a spell cast on a special clock? Can you beat Fallout 3 as Benjamin Button? You're probably wondering what the hell kind of idea this is for a challenge. Let me tell you, it might not be a good idea, but it's definitely an idea. The premise of the curious case of Benjamin Button is that a baby is born as an old man, but still the size of a baby, and he ages in reverse. By the time he's in his late 60s, instead of being a wrinkled strip of leather, he's a child. Age is not something we have direct control over in Fallout 3. Even when you're a baby, you're not really a baby, you're just a scaled down person. Believe it or not, this actually works to our advantage. As soon as I leave Vault 101, the clock starts ticking. Every 15 minutes, I use the player.setscale command to decrease my size by 5%. This gives me 5 hours to complete Fallout 3. I either beat the game, or I keep shrinking until I eventually blink out of existence. Because there are no special restrictions on weapons I can use, I drain the points from Perception and put 3 points each into Charisma, Intelligence, and Luck. To level up quicker and to have a higher speech skill, I try to climb up on top of a table like my dog used to do, but a table's natural defense is an invisible wall to keep people off of it, and that's science. As the overseer was talking about my pit boy, I got distracted by the balloons. I threw shit all over the place, got beat up by Butch, gave old Lady Palmer the experience of a lifetime, went down to the basement for some private time with Jonas, got my picture taken, and went to take the GOAT exam. I chose medicine, small guns, and speech as my tag skills. Amada then woke me up and explained the situation. She gave me a handgun, which I used to put a few bullets in her skull, and I was off to kill as many people as I could before I left. Officer Kendall was first, then Butch. The Rad Roaches got his mother before I could. The Holdens were next, and I found myself in the Overseer's office. He and his guards died. I tried to kill Amada again, opened the vault door, killed two more guards, and escaped. The countdown to my extinction begins now. About halfway to Megaton, I checked to make sure the console command would actually work, just to be safe. Those of you who've seen my Fallout 3 as a baby or New Vegas as a giant videos know that there are two big hurdles to overcome here. The first is obvious. The smaller you get, the slower you move. The second hurdle is that, for whatever reason, your damage output is directly related to your size. The smaller you are, the less damage you do to enemies. I made my way to Megaton because I wanted to follow the main story as closely as I could. I didn't want to go straight to Vault 112 to save Dad. There needs to be some tension. My first stop in Megaton was Craterside Supply to pick up a radiation suit, stim packs, and ammo. I broke into Moriarty's saloon, stole his terminal password, and found out that Dad had went to Galaxy News Radio. I killed Gob before I left the saloon, killed Calamity Jane and a few of the Megaton citizens on my way out of the city, and I was off to Galaxy News Radio. A few mole rats committed suicide by me, I ended a few raiders in front of the super duper ultra mega mart, nearly blinded myself by blowing up an iBot right in front of my face, swam through a river, and went down into Farragut West Station. And wouldn't you know it, the game crashed. With that crash, it's a good time to bring up, well, time. My initial idea for this challenge was to create a script that would check the in-game time and automatically decrease my size every 15 minutes. That ended up not working the way I wanted it to because it didn't really work at all. Maybe the proper way to do this would be to pause the timer in dialogue or when saving, but that would have ended up being a giant pain in the ass. So the timer is constantly running. I can reload an old save if I get into a sticky situation, but all that will do is eat away at my time. The only reason the clock stops is if the game crashes. I eventually made it out of the tunnels and arrived on the scene to help the Brotherhood fight against the super mutants attacking Galaxy News Radio. After looting their corpses, repairing a few items, and picking up a fat man, the first 15 minutes outside of Vault 101 had passed. Time to shrink down to 95%. Not a minute later, the super mutant behemoth showed up and died. I then went inside Galaxy News Radio to speak to 3Dog, passed a speech check to avoid fixing his radio station, left the building, and for reasons medical science still can't explain, I got attacked by Sarah Lyons and her gang of losers. I legitimately have no idea why that happened. 
I was concerned that it would mess up the ending of the game, that maybe I wouldn't be able to enter the citadel without being attacked or something. But fuck it, that's a problem for a few hours from now. I fast traveled back to the super duper mart, leveled up again, raised my speech skill up to 75, and began heading southeast toward Rivet City. I passed by Wilhelm's wharf and ignored the old woman living there. The curse of Grandma Sparkle is very real, and I don't have time to deal with that. I blew the head off a scavenger and committed the mortal sin of not even giving the bucket a passing greeting. Under a highway, I quickly dispatched of four raiders holding out there, slept to heal myself and save stim packs, and continued my journey. I discovered the citadel, thankfully nobody there was hostile towards me, got wet, crossed a bridge that will play a role in the future, and discovered the Jefferson Memorial. I know that I said I was going to follow the story closely, but I decided to clear out the memorial now instead of waiting. The longer I put it off, the harder it'll be because I'll do less damage. The limited supply of assault rifle ammo ensured that at least the first few super mutants wouldn't be difficult to kill. Down in the basement, four super mutants were clumped together. A smart man would have pulled out a grenade and disposed of them quickly. With them dead from bullets, I cleared out the remaining mutants used a bed to make sure that the area was clear, and exited the building out into complete darkness. As I felt the loving touch of the eternal void wrapping its arms around my soul, the game crashed. I'd lost maybe 15 seconds by restarting the game and loading into my most recent save. But that's almost one-tenth of one percent of my total time, so it really is practically meaningless. I continued running through complete darkness, hit the second 15 minute period, shrunk down to 90%, wasted even more time by waiting for daylight on a rock and going the wrong way towards Rivet City. Waiting for the bridge to extend was as boring as it was aggravating. I made my way through the dump tub, spoke to Madison Lee, and realized that I fucked up. I could have saved myself a trip if I'd snagged the holotapes in Project Purity. How unfortunate. After getting lost in Rivet City, I went back to the Jefferson Memorial, listened to holotape number 10, and knew where I was going next. I fast traveled back to Vault 101, hopped over a few rocks, and began the march towards Smith Casey's garage. Time is of the essence. Every enemy encounter wastes time. The game crashed again after I ran past a Mr. Gutsy. I killed two mole rats, then a third one, and a rat scorpion. You know how I literally just said time is of the essence? Well, some opportunities are too good to pass up. There were four innocent people hanging out under a rock, just asking to be killed. I happily obliged, looted their bodies, shot at a bug, got into a bit of a scuffle with the raiders at Evergreen Mills, left after killing a few of them, and with Smith Casey's garage in sight, the time had come to set my scale to 85%. The mole rats tried to distract me from my mission. I waited for what felt like an eternity for the vault door to open, put on the jumpsuit, and hopped inside the Tranquility Lounger. You already know what I did in Tranquility Lane. With time being the valuable resource it is, the only option was to call upon the Chinese to save Dr. Braun from himself. Doc got in my way, I exited the simulation, checked to make sure that my size was still at 85%, and agreed to meet Dad back at Rivet City. Me running behind my daddy really shows how big of a hit I've taken to my movement speed. I fast traveled back to Rivet City, found myself neck deep in complete darkness for the second time, navigated my way into the ship, opened the door to the science lab, and the game crashed. Again. Dr. Lee and Dad spoke for a bit, I saw how small I'd become, went back to the Jefferson Memorial, only to find that by the time I got there, the science nerds had already entered the building. I was tasked with going down into the already cleared out basement to press buttons and shit. I wasted time by going in a circle, flipped the switch in the basement, went back upstairs for the fuses, Dad called me a cloud, I installed the fuses, turned on the computer, and the time had come to go down to 80%. I was now the perfect size to play in the sewer. Then the Enclave ruined my party by arriving at the Jefferson Memorial. And hey, the game crashed again. I tried to jump my way over to the small space outside the fence, but it didn't work. An Enclave soldier greeted me at the stairs and was promptly dispatched. I watched as people a full head and shoulders taller than me discussed various things that ended with my father not even having the guts to look me in the eye as he died. Pussy. I guided Madison Lee and the other worthless NPCs down into the tunnels, got the rare opportunity to fire a fat man not only indoors, but underground as well. Of course, it's difficult to get the fat man out of your ass when soldiers are constantly shooting at you. As we approached the safe zone, Madison informed me of Garza's heart condition, and I informed her that Garza is a pussy and deserves to die. 
We finally arrived at the Citadel, and the waiting game began. That whole not stopping the clock unless the game crashes thing bit me in the ass here. Every now and again, Madison will just not enter the Citadel, but you'll have already gotten stuck in place for the upcoming dialogue. I wasted nearly two minutes waiting for her to show up. Then I had to actually sit through her conversation with Elder Lions, which wasted more time. All that waiting drained the clock, and I'm now at 75%. My movement speed is now noticeably slower. I spoke to Rothschild, took the shortcut to the aid ring, quickly got information about Vault 87 from a terminal, got the location from Rothschild, and was off to Little Lamplight. I'm 25% slower than I was at the beginning of the game. That might not seem like much, but think about it this way. If it takes me two and a half minutes to walk from Smith Casey's garage to Little Lamplight at the normal speed, it takes three minutes seven seconds when scaled down to 75%. Now remember that that time increase applies to all distances in the game. I'd been putting a fair amount of points into small guns, in an attempt to offset the penalties from shrinking, which made taking on a few super mutants on the way to Lamplight not terribly difficult. I saved scummed my way through Little Shit's dialogue and got myself into Little Lamplight. Fun fact, I'm now smaller than the children. How wonderful. I passed through the gate, opened the door to Murder Pass, killed a few super mutants, and it was already time to shrink again. This time, down to 70%. On the plus side, getting into Vault 87 leveled me up enough to get my small gun skill up to 74. Super mutants are now quite large and a bit troublesome to kill. Nevertheless, I kept pushing through the vault, taking the super punishment as necessary. It's not all bad though. I hit a stealth boy, which allowed me to sneak past most of the super mutants on the way to the test labs. I got spotted by a centaur, which alerted an unwelcome guest. That small inconvenience caused my stealth boy to not last to the point that I'd hoped it would, which was setting off the fire alarm to release Fox. I decided to have Fox retrieve the Gek because, even with the radiation suit, I wasn't sure if my movement speed would be slow enough to make it impossible to get the Gek. The problem is that Fox is slow. Waiting for him to dramatically walk to the reactor chamber eats up a lot of time. At least it allows me to conserve ammo. Once again though, despite me just saying how important time is, I wasted more of it by telling Fox to get the Gek, then beating him inside and grabbing it myself to see if he had any unique dialogue. He did and it also proved my point from earlier about the radiation. Even with the radiation suit, I succumbed to radiation poisoning. With the Gek in hand, I took my leave, got ambushed by the Enclave, and woke up in Raven Rock. Before I had the chance to break free of my shackles and take to the sky, the time had come to shrinky dink my way down to 65%. After getting my shit back, I passed the skill check, then killed the Enclave officer, and began searching for the president. Autumn committed treason by directly opposing the president's last order and instructing all Enclave personnel to attack me on sight. Critical shots and a maxed out small gun skill came in handy when dealing with Autumn's goons. For reasons even I don't understand, before speaking to the president, I laid down half a dozen mines and set them off with a grenade to see if it was possible to kill the president. When that predictably failed, I tried a few fat man shots before getting got by myself. I convinced the president to blow up Raven Rock, took the FEV vial, pushed through the base towards the exit, and was finally free. I had the situation completely under control, but Fox doubted me. He followed the vertebrate to Raven Rock to free me. I don't like it when people doubt me. The only person allowed to doubt me is me. That meant Fox had to die. He had completed his role as my item retrieving mule. He's at peace in hell now. And wouldn't you know it, it's already time to go down to 60%. At this point, the run was looking like it'd be disappointingly easy, which is not what I wanted. So, I made a very, very bad decision. Why fast travel when you can run across the entire map at 60% speed? I can't possibly understate what a monumental mistake this was. How about I start with a simple number? It took me 40 fucking minutes to get from Raven Rock to the Citadel. The first problem was the raiders encamped near a pond just outside of Raven Rock. They ate up a lot of my ammo and stim packs. Then I made the fun discovery that I could no longer outrun rad roaches, and because of the damage reduction courtesy of my puny stature, they chew through ammo like my uncle chewed through my asshole on Thanksgiving. After about 10 minutes, I got into a hell of a fight with rad scorpions, more rats, a wanderer, and dogs. Then my game crashed again, because of course it did, meaning that I had to do that fight over again. The second time around, I killed the rad scorpion, then the dogs, and ended with the wanderer. As I got closer to the citadel, a Yagwai saw me as a tasty treat, just like my uncle. I tried to kill a few mole rats with a mine, 
and accidentally crippled myself. I'm not gonna waste your time any more than I need or want to. Just know that by the time I got to the Citadel, I was laughably low on supplies, and my scale was down to 50%. I was about to enter the Citadel and march towards the end of the line, but there was this nagging feeling in the back of my head, so I went back to where it all began, Vault 101. I listened to the emergency broadcast to get the password, opened the vault door, and agreed to end Vault 101's troubles. Then I killed Officer Armstrong. The last few days or weeks of trouble in Vault 101 would seem like a happy memory to everyone who's left after I'm done with them. I pulled out my 44 Magnum, channeled my inner robots, and let my slaughter begin. I only had a few rounds, so I had to choose my victims carefully. Amada was one of my primary targets. The way she exploded after being shot surprised even me. What surprised me even more was the fact that of all the people I attacked, Old Lady Palmer, the same woman who got a face full of a little boy's crotch, was the one person who managed to escape my wrath. Officer Wilkins was not so lucky. Mac, the same pussy who was hiding behind the glass all those minutes ago, is now the overseer. He, much like Amada, also exploded when he died. Before I could leave the vault for good, it was time to shrink down to 45%. I saved a bucket from falling to its doom, carried it with me as far as I could, lost it to the void as I opened the door to the Vault 101 entrance, and fast traveled to the Citadel to end it all. After a quick comparison shot, I entered the Citadel courtyard and spent 35 seconds running towards the laboratory. Then came round two of the waiting game, as Sarah Lyons and her deadbeat father debated about how to handle the Enclave situation. So many minutes wasted. On the plus side, I could now buy ammo from Captain Durga, who I didn't murder this time around. Outside, the Brotherhood soldiers blew past me with lightning speed. I slowly, oh so slowly, trailed behind Liberty Prime, and it was already time to drop down to 40%. By this point, it was becoming painstakingly clear that I may have fucked up. Benjamin Button's life wasn't easy, mine shouldn't be either. Before going any further, I want to point out something that I've noticed about a few of these challenges. The ones that should be relatively straightforward, like this one, the Skyrim Fork Challenge, or the New Vegas Companion Only Challenge, usually end up being a clusterfuck. In this case, Liberty Prime sided with communism because he took his ball and went home, walking the wrong way. It seemed like a strange thing for him to do, so I pressed onward and found the culprit. Part of the bridge didn't load. It makes sense, actually. Liberty Prime can't walk on a path that isn't there. I then did what any rational person would do. Who needs Liberty Prime, anyway? It's not that difficult to glitch your way through the electric fence. I jumped off the bridge, swam through the water while spamming jump because at this scale, the natural swimming position is about a foot below the water's surface, and eventually made my way to solid ground. I encountered more glitched ground, but I made it past the errors, and the bridge to the Jefferson Memorial was in sight. There was one last hurdle, about five Enclave soldiers to face. Remember that fat man equipping issue I mentioned in Taft Tunnels? That reared its ugly head again here. It didn't help that the soldiers were all stupid accurate, did a lot of damage, I did very little, and they were more interested in turning me into a cripple than they were killing me quickly. I spent about 8 minutes dealing with these godless heathens. I probably should have stocked up on stim packs before coming this far, but I didn't. There were two more soldiers on the bridge that were also troublesome to deal with, but before I could confront them, I went down to 35% size. In time, they understood what it was like to lose. I said it was easy to glitch through the energy wall. It is, if you can jump over the railing to get into position, and if you're actually bigger than a slice of cheese. I hopped on a tire, fell into the river, swam to shore, spent about four minutes running to the other side of the memorial, where I could reach one of the corners of the barrier. I tried glitching my way through the barrier in an assortment of locations. In an unfortunate, but not exactly unexpected turn of events, none of them worked. I was back where I started, and now I was down to 25% size. I only had one option left, go back to the Citadel and hope that Liberty Prime had gotten his act together. By this point, the game had crashed, forcing me to reload the game. I took off my armor to maximize my speed. About halfway across the bridge, I was down to 20%. It still took 6 minutes to go from the Citadel to the end of the bridge, where the gap had been earlier. Liberty Prime was doing his job, thankfully. The group of Enclave soldiers that had given me trouble were now cleared out by the Brotherhood. Just before I stepped onto the bridge to the Jefferson Memorial, I encountered a problem I hadn't even considered. At this size, the Pip-Boy stops working. I don't know why, I don't care why, because it doesn't matter. All I care about is the fact that I'm slower than a crippled slug and I can't even equip any armor to protect myself. As Liberty Prime cleared out the remaining forces outside the memorial, I entered the memorial proper and I shrunk yet again 
this time down to 15%. At this size, the game itself starts to fall apart. You're partially glitched through the floor. You can't hold weapons properly, and they're only about halfway visible. And because of the now 85% reduction in weapon damage, I might as well be tickling the Enclave soldiers instead of shooting at them with bullets. It took almost 90 rounds from a Chinese assault rifle to take down an already damaged Enclave soldier. The small upside is that because I'm beginning to glitch out of reality itself, the Enclave soldiers can't actually damage me with their laser rifles. The third person view is also starting to fall apart. I opened the door to the rotunda, was now actually below the floor, eventually passed the skill check to avoid fighting Autumn, and the game crashed. I reloaded the game, talked to Sentinel Alliance, and it crashed again. I was worried that I'd broken the game. Luckily, by using the tried and true tactic of walking backwards, I was able to ascend the thousands of steps up to Project Purity. There was no way in hell I could ever reach any of the buttons inside to activate Project Purity, so I volunteered several lines to take one for the team. She died a slow death, I could hardly even see myself, and I beat Fallout 3 as Benjamin Button. I could talk about how this run wasn't difficult until I started making bad decisions. I could talk about how the challenge itself was weird to begin with. But if you've made it this far, you're probably wondering what happens when you set your scale down to 0%. Unfortunately, nothing. The smallest you can get is about 1%. Entering player.setscale0 does nothing either. I think it's a failsafe to keep the universe from collapsing on itself. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout 3 as Benjamin Button. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.